Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, you're in for a treat because I am going to be sitting down interviewing my property tax accountants. I'm going to be asking them all about capital gains tax, how to save tax as a property investor, joint ventures, partnerships. You are going to love this video. So if you enjoy the channel, do me a favor, hit the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe and welcome Courtney and Richard. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for coming down from Gorillas Accountancy. You've traveled from Bolton. And you guys are literally about to run a marathon in a couple of days. Psychopaths. <laughs> I don't know what it is with my, my solicitor, accountants, mortgage brokers, everybody in my power team seems to be like really into extreme sports and marathon running and stuff like that. Um, but no, really appreciate you coming down and good luck on your marathon on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, awesome. So why don't you start by just telling me a little bit about the importance of tax and why it's important to have an accountant and good people around you when you're running any kind of business, but particularly property. It's really important because, you know, actually paying an accountant, you could end up uh, saving quite a bit of money in tax. And um, there's quite a few things that you really need to be thinking about. The right way to structure your business, for example, limited or personally owned or partnership. And also the expenses that you can claim, which can really sort of make a difference between uh, a high and a lo much lower tax bill. Mm, and also when you understand things, that, you know, we were talking earlier about be um, bedroom re relief tax, which we'll talk about, but when you understand certain things that you can do and you, where you don't even have to pay any tax at all, it opens the doors up and you can start being a bit more entrepreneurial and having a bit more of a flair about you. So, um, okay, well, why don't we start from the beginning? Why don't you talk to me about one of the most obvious ways to save tax is through expenses. So if you're, if you're, if you're making you know, um, 10,000 pounds a month from your rent, you're gonna claim all of your expenses as tax deductible. And a lot of people don't realize what they can and what they cannot claim. So, so talk to me about some of the things that you can and you can't claim as tax deductible as a property investor. Okay, yeah, so mainly anything that you can think of that you've incurred for renting out the property, you can claim for so i'm talking even traveling to the business you can have all your repairs and the maintenance of that business cleaning it the accountancy fees because like we said you do want an accountant gas certificates your legal fees letting agents fees anything along those lines the only thing that you probably can't claim for is if you to enhance that property so that would then be what's called um, a capital a capital expense sure. so you can't get full allowable expenses on that um, but if you was to repair things or you was to replace something like a like for like replacement, then that is allowable. Mm, okay, interesting. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few other bits and pieces, but obviously one that um, might be of interest to your viewers would be training costs. So if you have any training that relates to the business that you, you, you're working through, that enhance your skills, that relate to that uh, um, property business, then those can be claimed as well. Mm. And talk to me through a question I get asked all the time. Should you be investing through a company or should you just buy as, a, as, as an individual? And what are the pros and cons to, to each? Well, if, through a company, it, there, there are some more um, obligations. So you need to file accounts each year with Companies House and file corporation tax return, as well as your self-assessment, which you would be doing anyway. Um, but it can be, there can be a tax saving there. Um, there's a few reasons for that. So the first one is um, the, uh, the, the tax rate for corporate uh, profits is 19%. So for example, if you're a high rate taxpayer, you're already going to be paying 40% on your um, income and profits that you would get. So there's a potentially a tax saving there that can be used to reinvest uh, in property if that's your intention. Um, so yeah, the limited company can be a better route for that. There's also the mortgage interest. So uh, a few years back, there was a change to the way that the, um, the, the expense for mortgage interest was treated for personally owned properties. Um, and there's a restriction on that at 20%. So that's the tax relief. So it can be a lot more advantageous to go with the limited company, but it does differ from each person. So what we'd say is get the tax advice that's mm. tailored to you personally. And what about if you've got properties already like as you know i've got a lot of properties that i bought in my personal name before section 24 was even a thing because it didn't come into full effect until 2020 if you've got properties in your personal name and you've now been hit with section 24 tax is it worth it or is it beneficial to move your properties over to a limited company to save with the section 24 
Well, typically when you're having when your limited company buys the properties from yourself, you're going to incur things like your stamp duty again or your legal fees. So it's actually best at weighing up your options. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you're going to purchase a property and set it up via a limited company, you would probably do that from the get go of the purchasing yeah. that of the initial purchase of the property. Yeah. Um, so again, if you're thinking of doing anything like that, speak to your accountant because you need to assess your personal situation yeah. and your other personal income to find whether you should be purchasing it through a limited company or getting that personally. Mm. Yeah. You could you could end up being hit with the stamp duty twice really when you buy the initial property initially and then when your company purchases it from, from you personally. So that's the thing you need to weigh up whether it's worth taking that hit and going with a limited company or just thinking, look, I'll keep these properties personally. Anything in the future, I'll buy through the limited company. Yeah, and I think generally speaking, the former is usually what happens because you're effectively having to sell the properties, aren't you? Because it's not a case of moving it into a company. You have to sell it to the company yeah. and then you're gonna incur all the costs that come with selling a property. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, that's it. There's, there's, there's the cost from selling it yourself, so solicitor's fees and also, um, the stamp duty and fees the the, uh, the the company would pay from purchasing it from you. So there's there's two big costs generally speaking that you have to pay tax wise as a property investor. The first is your income tax. So if you're getting a lot of rent coming in, you have to pay tax on that. And we've talked about ways to save that, incurring expenses, claiming back your expenses such as training courses, um, all the things that you can. Also paying yourself through a company so that you can pay yourself tax effectively as well, which is great. But the big expense that can come up tax wise is also capital gains tax because if you buy a property and you bought it back in 2009 2010 like how i bought a lot of my properties they've now tripled in value so if you want to actually get that money from the property and you, and you sell it you're going to get hit with capital gains tax which is a very high um a high percentage so could you guys talk to me a little bit about capital gains tax and ways to navigate through that and to potentially make that as 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 prudent as possible yeah definitely um, so with with capital gains tax if it's through a company you're still going to pay that 19 percent tax um and that th this this arises when you sell an asset so you you know one of your um, investment properties will be classed as a uh, as an asset now if you own the the property personally um the rates are 18 percent if you're a basic rate taxpayer and then it goes to 28 percent for anything over that however there is a 12,300 pounds tax-free capital gains allowance so if you are selling property it's worth bearing that in mind because that's available each tax year so you might want to sort of think about when you sell your properties and the timing because you can use that each tax year if you were to sell two properties it might be worth doing one in one tax year and then the next in the next tax year so you can make use of the capital gains tax-free allowance in each year mm, and that makes sense that's why a lot of portfolio landlords if someone's got 20 houses and they decide right i want to sell up they sell one property every year for tax reasons yes. yeah which is why when we come in and we offer them lease option agreements so we'll say well why don't you agree the sale now with us We'll, we'll buy all your 10 houses and we'll stagger it over the next 10 years. And then, of course, we take control, benefit from the rent and any potential capital appreciation. So that's, that's the reason that landlords do that, because they, 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 they're getting that 12,000 or, or, or whatever it is exactly um, tax free with capital, with capital gains tax. What, what are some other ways to potentially avoid paying that staggering? So if you've got a property and you say you bought it for 100 grand, it's now worth 300 and you want to get some equity, but you don't want to get hit with taxes. Are there anything else that you can yeah. do? Yeah, so what you could actually do is instead of selling that property on and receiving the profit, you can just refinance it and then you can take the money out that way. Mm. So then it's not actually a sale. So you're not actually gaining profit. You're just basically getting a bigger finance on the property. Yeah, yeah. And if also another thing to mention, if you've lived in the property at all, there are some tax reliefs on that. So if it's your main residence, then potentially there won't be any capital gains tax to pay at all. Or if you have lived, lived in it at any point, um, it may reduce the capital gains tax that's, that's due on that. That's great. So for those people that move into a house, maybe a couple move into a house, they live in it, they buy it cheap, they do it up and then they sell it, they flip it. They're not paying any tax at all because it's their residence. Yeah, and even if they moved in between um, moving out and then going into a new property and then selling the property, you get um, the pri private residence relief for the mm -hmm. last nine months before the sale. Mm. And then, or, or if you're not living in it, as you said, Courtney, refinance it. Yeah. And I don't understand why more people don't do this because if you sell it and you're going to get hit with, say, 25, 28%, 
capital gains tax. You have more money in your pocket if you refinanced it on a 75% loan to value. You've got more money in your pocket and you're keeping the property. Yeah, we, we see that and it's, it's worth thinking about because you can uh, invest in a property. Um, we sometimes see them in, you know, people move, uh, will make property into uh, multiple dwellings, for example. Um, the property value will then be worth more. They can refinance the property at that point, use that funds um, that's released from refinancing to invest in more property. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. What did you think of the new stamp duty um, announcement from Liz Trust recently? It's great news, I think. You know, it's always good that the, uh, the allowance has increased, you know, for people looking to buy property. We're never going to turn it down, are we? No, and I think, I think it's going to, because house prices have been going crazy for the last two, three years. They've been going up and up and up and up. And just as they were beginning to sort of tail off a little bit and become a bit more stagnant, they do this in the new, in the new budget, which I think is going to give another boost yet again to house prices, yeah. which is quite exciting, really, for pe especially people entering into the market. Yeah. Especially like first time buyers as well, yeah. like particularly people in my situation, it just makes it a lot more appealing because a first house that is less than £250,000, it's going to be more appealing because they've got less additional fees to pay on top of it. Yeah. Talk to me a bit about when you're, bu when you're buying properties, is there a reason to set up multiple companies per purchase that you do? Do you need lots of different companies to be a property investor? Not necessarily, no. It just all depends on um, your plan. If you're planning to set up a portfolio, how many shareholders you want with each different company, um, sorry, with each different property. So you may have different shareholders or investors. So you may want to have the multiple companies uh, so that you can have the different share structure. Yeah. So if you've got joint ventures, for instance, with lots of different individuals, then you might have a new company per transaction. Yeah. But there's not a limit that you can have. Uh, there's, you can have as many properties as you want in one company, right? Yeah, of course. There's just something to be aware of. You might have to do something called FRS 102, which is slightly larger accounts. But that's only if um, your balance sheet goes over a certain value and your turnover um, is over a certain amount. And if you have more than 10 employees, so... There is that to consider, but it is quite um, a large amount. Mm -hmm. I'll leave that to, to your accountant. I'd say speak to your accountant. They'll know what uh, yeah. the accounting and filing requirements are for your business account. And sometimes it's not worth trying to be too clever, clever. Like I know people, there's, there's some people that are trying to save on VAT, so they set up another company. And, then, and it's like, just take, just accept that you're, you're, you're growing and, and, and just accept that. And you can always, the bigger you grow, the more expenses you can claim back. Like we claim back part of this house as tax deductible because... We've got a, a, an office here and, you know, we're getting a studio. So it's about being really creative about how you can bring your tax bill down. And all them properties are in one company as well, because it's all under the same roof. What can happen is if you make a loss on a um, one property, you can actually offset that against your gains yeah. uh, of another property. Whereas if it was in separate companies, that wouldn't be an option. Yeah. Also as well, um, as you know, I like holiday lets and service accommodation, short, st short stay lets, there's a lot of advantages to that because a tenant will have a lot of rights. Whereas if you've got guests and they're in a holiday let, they haven't got the same type of rights that tenants have, but it's also great from a tax perspective. Could you talk to us a little bit about holiday lets and some of the things that you can claim back as tax deductible through holiday lets? Yeah, it, it will potentially generate more expenses that can be pulled into the holiday lets, which um, wouldn't be sort of available for the normal uh, rental property. Um, there's things that you would, th there are extra costs that you may be incurring, so, such as letting agent fees for advertising the holiday let, uh, cleaning of the property. But there are other things that um, really wouldn't possibly be um, available for other things like, you know, if you're doing things like renovating, fitting out the kitchen. Um, these are all tax deductible costs, adding heating systems, really getting it ready to be let out as a holiday let, um, you know, these ex extra expenses and other things like uh, bank interests and so on if it's a, a holiday let business. So basically you can you get capital allowances on a, lot of the, um, on a lot of the expenses when you're making the property in good standards, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's right. And because possibly with uh, those are extra sort of costs that you can bring into your uh, income tax calculation for the year, the capital allowances. So you'll then claim that back uh, and over time when you're getting your income? Exactly, rather than you know it being added to the sort of cost of the property and then only coming into the capital gains tax calculation, which you may only see years down the line. Mm, mm, that's, if that's you decide to sell it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
And I think it is important having people around you, a, a, good, a good firm of accountants that can advise you on this stuff because if you, not only can you save a lot of money, but also if you do it wrong, and you think, you, you think you're being clever, but actually what you're doing is not correct. You can end up getting fines and you can end up having to cough up that money that you thought you'd save from the HMRC. Exactly, yeah. You, you know, it, we, it's really important to us that things are filed correctly. You know, you get the right advice. But also, if you can make a tax saving as well, you know, that's extra money in, in your pocket for, you know, future investment. Yeah, and the thing I don't understand is people think that when you're saving on tax and you're legally and ethically avoiding tax that it's... Um, the government and the HMRC won't like that. But actually, they do like it because usually the way to save tax is to follow the incentives that they give you. For instance, they want us to have electric cars. So they incentivize us. The things that they want us to do, if we just follow them and understand what the, what the government wants, um, then, then, that, then that, that's one of the best, best ways to save tax. Yeah, they don't call them reliefs or allowances. For no reason. They're not, they're not a trap there. Yeah. Uh, they're there for a relief or yeah. to allow you... A tax free and, and you don't have to do anything dodgy to save money on tax yeah. you know anything that are the right things <laughs> exactly and only, anything that helps the trade of the business in the long run it's going to bring more tax in you know the more successful a business is the better the, the company does um you know that's going to bring more tax in overall for the uh, the, the treasury and hmrc and there's lots of things that my students are doing making money and they think they have to pay tax on they're getting money, but actually they don't realise they don't have to pay any tax. Like for instance, um, renting a room out in your house. Could you talk to me a little bit about rent a, rent a room relief? Yeah, of course. So what happens is you've got your house like here and you could just rent out one room to um, typically what you know as a lodger. Um, and they will basically have access to all of your house, but they will reside within one room. They can pay you rent for that room. And as long as you don't receive more than 7,500 in one year, then it's absolutely tax free. So you basically, if you're living in a house, you rent out a spare room, yeah. they pay you seven and a half grand a year in rent, yeah. and you just pay no tax on that at all. Exactly. Absolutely yeah. incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about training costs. Because one of the questions that I get a lot is when people are signing up to my courses, they'll say, can I claim this back? And how long do I have to claim it back? Um, of course, I know that they can, because if they're setting up a property business and it's going to enhance their skills as a property investor. But I just wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth and hear a little bit about that. Talk to me about, can you claim back training courses as tax deductible? Well, HMRC actually have very specific advice on this. It's to enhance a skill that you've got and for the trade of, of what you're working on. So if you're in the property business and you're doing training courses to help you run that business and uh, improve the business, then that cost is fine. If you're in a property business and you do, an, like for example, a baking course, then that's not gonna be allowable. So yeah. to enhance the skills that you've got and relating to the actual business trade that you're, you're doing. Great. My advice to my clients is, should HMRC ever come along and inquire into your taxes, if you're happy to sit there and justify that that training cost is specifically for the need of the business and it enhances a skill that you've already got, then... Yeah, so in other words, if you, if you go on a course to learn about bakery or dog walking, you're not going to be able to... You know, that clearly isn't going to enhance you in your business. But if you've got a property company or a deal sourcing or you're doing rent to rents or flipping houses, and you go on a course that's going to help you with that, yeah. then it's very clearly, it's a, it's a tax deductible expense. And it's the same for us. We're accountants, so that's our trade. We have subscriptions. We need to do training, um, training courses to keep up to date with skills, keep up to date with tax law. You know, that relates to our business and the trade that we do. Mm. Those are allowable costs for, for, for us and for Gorilla Accounting. That's great. Final question. A lot of my property deals and a lot of my students that I teach do joint ventures. So they'll buy a house with somebody else. So it might be a case of um, one of my students gets really good at finding houses. They'll find the house. They'll put the team together. They'll do all the work, but they'll get a, a joint venture partner that puts the money in and they'll go 50-50 on the profits. How would you as tax accountants advise a, a, an operation like that or a deal like that to be legally structured? And how would you get that, a company like that formed? So there's, there's, you, can, you can have it as a partnership, but we think that a limited company is the best way to go. Um, you can have the shareholding however you want. So we normally say set up a company with 100 shares. 100 shares, you can have a percentage however you like. So what, if it's 50-50, if 
50-50, 70-30, 70-30. So you can set, set up the shares however you like in that limited company based on your agreement. Um, and then what can happen, the investor might want to put the money in as a loan to the company and then any profits from the sale would be split as per the shareholding. Great. So that would be pre-agreed. We advise you to get legal advice on, you know, if there's any contracts involved and um, just to to uh, make sure that, you know, you, you're protected. But the, any more money from the investor that's put into the company's loan would be then be taken out. And then any profits would be split as per the shareholding. Incredible. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming down and sharing. I really appreciate it. Have you got any final words of advice for somebody wanting to make money in property that's thinking of, beginning to think about tax? Get the right advice because, you know, it's worth speaking to an accountant, you know, it really is, and, and do it from the start because, you know, if you structure your business, either owning it personally or limited company, just think about how you're going to do that from the start, get the right advice so you're on the right path and, uh, you know, working in the right way. Guerrilla Accounting can help with that. There we go. <laughs> how do we reach out, Courtney, if, if people want to get in touch? Um, simply search Guerrilla Accounting um, on Google. You'll see our website and straight away there is an option to speak to our new business team. So you can arrange a call or you can go via emails. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming down today all the way from Bolton. Guys, if you found that useful, do us a favour, hit the like button. If you've got further questions or you want me to do a part two and delve into other things, then just comment your questions below or of course, reach out to Gorilla Accountancy. I will leave their details in the description below and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks for watching.